Hey GED students, I got sent this problem on Facebook Messenger, Light and Salt Learning Facebook, uh, from Casey. And Casey knew how to solve these inequalities like this, and yet she kept getting a wrong answer. And I could see exactly where Casey went wrong. And it's a place where a lot of students would go wrong. So I definitely wanted to take the chance to tackle a problem like this with you. And so in order to do it, I actually want to go way back to solving one-step equations. And one of the things that I begged you guys to do when we were solving one-step equations. So let's look here. I want to look at what happened when we just had a really simple uh, equation. It could have been an inequality. It really doesn't matter. They're solved the same way, okay, that had a, a fraction bar in it. So remember what we did here. Well, the first thing I would ask you guys to do is read this. What does this say? Well, it says x over 5 equals 15. Yes, uh, but that's not the only way to say this because we learned that if in algebra we use a fraction bar to signal division. Now you might say that's not what it means in elementary school. Y yes, it, it does. Fraction bars always can be thought of as an act of division, okay? So one way to think about that is x divided by 5 uh, equals 15. So, uh, you know, when I'm solving equations, if I want to get rid of something, I do the opposite. And we know that the opposite of divide is multiply. Now, I got a lot of students who are so excited. They remember that's divide. They remember they need to multiply, but what they write down here is they write times 5. And I beg, 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 beg you not to write it that way. It's not that you're wrong. It's that the time sign isn't powerful enough to do what we need to do. Because we don't need to just times a number by 5. We need to times the entire left-hand side by 5. Multiplication and division pass out. They pass out. That's what we call the distributive property. So it didn't make a big difference back in one-step equations. You would get the same answer whichever way you wrote it. But on what we're going to look at today, it does make a big difference. So what I begged you guys to do was to use parentheses. Parentheses we start using in algebra because we have more than one step in algebra. And parentheses allow us to do two things, two things, guys, not just multiply, but group. Um, and so that is what we need. Okay, so if I was doing this, I would put parentheses around both sides and multiply by 5, and I'd see that lovely cancellation like we do, where multiplying and dividing by 5 cancel, and then there's the work to do, 15 times 5 written with parentheses. Now you might be saying like, well, Kate, why are you stressing so much about this? Well, it was that idea of not grouping that tripped Casey up. Let me show you what I mean. So let's go on over to this trickier example and see how it's really the same thing. So this inequality says x minus 2 is less than, and listen to what I say, the quantity of 2x plus 6, that whole expression, the quantity of 2x plus 6 divided by 4. Now, I love how Casey started. Casey said, hey, look, I hate this divide by 4 over here. It's gross, it's disgusting, and I want to get rid of it. It's dividing that whole right-hand side, so I'm going to get rid of it by multiplying. But listen to what I said. It's dividing that whole right-hand side, so I'm going to get rid of it by multiplying that whole right-hand side. So make sure you use your parentheses. I'm going to take this entire expression that's entire right hand side and I'm going to multiply by 4 and I do make sure that 4 lines up nicely with the top of the fraction so I can clearly see how multiplication and division um, cancel again that's just a neatness factor so you don't mistake that for an exponent now I am going to, to uh, balance what I do so what did I do I didn't you know, I multiplied the entire right hand side by 4 I'm going to multiply the entire left hand side by 4 Okay, do not skip this step. Do not skip showing yourself out, showing yourself this work because if you do, if you don't have those parentheses, you're not going to see that that 4 passes out. Casey, I think you just multiplied it 4 by negative 2, but that 4 is multiplying by every term on this side. The 4 is multiplying by x, so I get 4x, and the 4 is multiplying by negative 2, so I get negative 8. 
Now, on the right hand side, a lot of students panic, freak out. I don't know what to do. It looks so gross. Remember your goal. You were trying to cancel. Multiplying by four and dividing by four, cancel. They're gone. You don't have to do jack. And this just got a whole lot simpler like we wanted. We get 2x plus 6 on the right hand side. Now, the only difference between equations, solving equations like these with equal signs, and solving inequalities like these with inequality symbols, is that sometimes the sign flips with inequalities. Uh, but the only time it flips is when we multiply or divide by a negative. We did not multiply by or divide by a negative, and so we've done nothing to flip the sign. All right, so we did, we got rid of that ugly fraction that was freaking us out. Uh, but here's uh, the next thing I notice. I notice that I have X terms on both sides. See how I have an X term on the left side of the inequality sign and an X term on the right side of the inequality sign? Can't be having that. So let's get those two terms together. Now, uh, with inequalities, I like moving to the left. It just makes my life easier. You get the same answer. It's just less steps. All right. So I need to take that entire term, not just the X, the entire 2X. And so I'm going to subtract it away. We always move terms through adding and subtracting. And let's see what happens. If I have four X's, I take away two X's, I get two X. Now you might be saying, Kate, you just told me it passes out. And yet now you're only putting the two X with the four X. So yeah, I'm not multiplying now. I'm adding and subtracting. Since the beginning of math, we've only ever been able to add and subtract the same kinds of numbers. I mean, even when we were doing really basic operations, ones with ones, tens with tens. But multiplication has always passed out, all right? Okay, so it'll just affect that guy. My negative eight won't be affected. I've done nothing here to change my sign because I didn't multiply or divide by a negative. I subtracted. Uh, if I have 2x and I take away 2x, that zeroes out. So all I have is zero plus six or hello, six. Great, and now X is almost alone. I just have some numbers to get rid of, so let's go ahead and start doing that. Remember, we worked that order of operations backwards when we're solving, when we're moving from one side of a, uh, the inequality or equal sign to the other. All right, so I am going to move anything adding or subtracting first. So I will take away the subtract 8 by doing the opposite. I'm going to add 8 to both sides of the inequality. Let's see what our new inequality will be. Subtracting 8 and adding 8 are opposites. They zero out in this case, and I'm left with just 2x on that side. I've done nothing to affect the inequality symbol, and 6 plus 8 is 14. Beautiful. Almost done. X is almost alone, but I've got that 2 shoved up against it, meaning it's multiplying. And then look again. When I divide, I divide with fraction bars. So I'm going to divide 2x by 2 to get rid of that 2. I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. And now I ran out of room, so we're going to come over here. Sorry, that can mess up some students. Um, uh, multiplying and dividing by two cancel. So all I'm left with on the left-hand side is X. I've done nothing to change the inequality sign. It'll still be a less than. And 14 divided by two is, of course, seven. And I have X is less than seven. Now, that being said, some books, I didn't see the full picture from Casey. Some books will then, after you solve this, what we just did was solve. We'll ask you to also graph the solution. Not sure if that one did. This is the solution, okay? X is by itself, this is solved. But some just want you to show the solution on a number line. So if they asked you to do that as well, I'd bust out my number line. I'd at least make sure seven's on it, okay? I'd consider my inequality symbol, the symbol in the middle, and see if it's strictly less than or less than or equal to. And you can see I don't have that little line underneath, so this is what we call strictly less than, meaning x could be anything less than 7, but not 7 itself. And so when it can't be 7, we leave a hole, an open dot. It's like a hole in the graph. 7's not okay. But every number from 7 less, so I go off in the less than direction to the left, is okay, is a possible answer to this, you know, like six, five, four, three, two, one, all the numbers back there. All right. So there's the solution and here's the graph of the solution. You could be asked to do either or usually you're asked to solve, but you could also be asked to graph on the GD. 
All right. If you have any questions about that or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them.